Good morning on this beautiful Lord's Day. It's so good to see all of you out there. And we're going to start the song today as loving God, loving each other, and how true that is. for the opportunity to be here at your house and uh, Lord just to be able to see some of the faces of some believers that uh, it warms our heart just to see them and uh, just to even even just have a conversation with them across the parking lot uh, it does our heart good and Lord we're thankful for what you've done in our hearts and lives and we're thankful for the opportunity to be here today uh, we're thankful for the beautiful day that you've given Lord we pray uh, for the service today that you would bring honor and glory to yourself and may you be uplifted and honored and, Lord, at the same time, we want to honor and uplift our mothers um, during this day. And, uh, Lord, this is their special day. And, and uh, Lord, it's well-deserved. And we want to thank you for all the mothers out there who are here and, and those who are listening. And uh, we just want to give you uh, thanks for all that they do for us and how they've shaped our lives and, uh, and how many, uh, many mothers have pointed us towards you. And I want to thank you for it. And, uh, again, be with the service today. May your blessings be upon it. And uh, be with the music and the message. And uh, again, may you be honored and uplifted in all that we do. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, okay, a, co a couple of announcements here. Um, let me uh, say also to our seniors, we, this is the time of year we normally are recognizing our seniors who have graduated high school and, and some that have uh, graduated college. And uh, we actually went around what day was it? I think Allison, Allison Hudson grabbed a few and then we grabbed some and, and went and, and put some signs up in some of the seniors' yards uh, and recognizing them. And since we couldn't recognize them publicly uh, like this today. And so what they're, what, what they're asking is we normally do a slideshow uh, for our seniors. And so if you could, again, um, take some pictures of your senior or you have some pictures that you want to submit, um, please send those to Jeannie. And I think that is on an email. It's on an email somewhere. If you don't have that, you can call my wife or call the church office or, or somewhere, and we can give you Jeannie's email. And um, but send it to her. She will get you a. Uh, she will she will get a slideshow together. And also they asked if you could get a, a picture with your sign uh, that that was in the yard there. If you could get a picture of that, and, uh, and we would appreciate that. And please send that in to Miss Jeannie, and she'll take care of it from there. Um, also, Few Funeral Home is having a, is actually uh, collaborating, I guess you could say, with 
um, the First Baptist Church. First Baptist Church has a food bank, and um, and they are kind of running a little bit low on their on their uh, reserves there. And so, uh, if you can help with this, Pew Funeral Home is having a drop off time uh, that you can drop, uh, you know, non perishables all food in um, in their drive through over in town here. And, uh, and that's on May the 13th. That's going to be this Wednesday from 12 to 2. You don't have to get out of your car or anything like that. They'll come get it out, and, uh, and they'll make sure it gets to where it needs to go. So uh, you're, if, you need to be, if you want to be a part of that or help with this, uh, I'm sure they would appreciate that. And so that is this coming Wednesday. All right. And, again, we will, we will be doing uh, a drive-in for the next, at least the next couple weeks. So, um, so try to make plans for that. We, we may have to rearrange some parking or something out here a little bit to, to accommodate a few more cars. I don't know because I, I know they're strung around the side of the building there a little bit. So we may have to do a little something, but we will see. And I, I appreciate your patience and, and your faithfulness in coming. And, uh, and then also, we're going to be singing a song here in just a bit. And when we do that, um, uh, I think it's uh, Danny and... and uh, Jim are going to be coming around, and they got a little offering bucket. And I know people, most of you, a lot of you have been mailing your tithes and offerings in, and uh, we appreciate that. We appreciate your faithfulness. And um, But it, it, you're going to have an opportunity to give if you have not. If you haven't had that, if you haven't mailed it in or haven't had an opportunity to give yet, you're going to have an opportunity here in just a bit when we're singing that song. So don't be surprised if somebody comes up by your window with a bucket, all right? And, and, uh, they're not demanding money or anything like that. They're just, just giving you an opportunity to give, okay? And, um, and uh, so, all right. All right, let's sing. All right, on this beautiful Mother's Day, I was trying to think of what songs would be appropriate, and I thought 10,000 reasons. You mothers out there that are Christian mothers, there's nothing better and what you can give to your children to pass on your Christian heritage and be an example. And, you know, that just gives us so many reasons to praise the Lord. And children out there, if your parents are Christians, you need to thank God for them. And because it's it's getting, seems like it's not getting to be as common as it used to be, and that's sad. But let us live, let us proclaim our Lord and Savior.
worship His holy name. to leave with you and some praises as well. Let's start with the praises. All right, Miss uh, Harold Navon, I don't think are probably here today, but Josh and Amy, uh, well, Miss Amy, not Josh, but Miss Amy gave birth uh, this week to Harper Lynn Hurley. And so Yvonne and Harold are happy grandparents again. And uh, she weighed seven pounds, 15 ounces, and 20 inches long, and everybody's doing great. And so we praise the Lord for that. Uh, also, Sherman is back in autumn care. He's not in the hospital anymore. And so he's having to do some more rehab and things like that as well. So remember him. And then also, uh, Paul Gordon sustained a fall. And I had to get some stitches. And, uh, and, and also pray for Miss Becky during this time as well. She's tending to him. Uh, but uh, remember Paul and Becky uh, at this time as well. And then also, Marie Swain. This is uh, Miss Mandy's mother who's having some health problems and uh, trying to figure out exactly what's going on with her. And uh, I think, uh, is she still in the hospital? They, okay, they still have her in the hospital, or so uh, doing some testing and things like that. So, uh, so remember her, and then also the family of Ruby Davis, 
this is Danny Henson's aunt who passed away. So let's remember all these, and there's quite a few there. So, um, Blair's. What? The one from Blair. Oh, yes. I have one from Blair. Okay, and then Blair gave this one. This is uh, to play for Michael Thompson. This is not our Michael Thompson. This is a different Michael Thompson. He's a retired forestry teacher, and uh, he's now in Colorado. He has the flu, pneumonia, and COVID-19. And so he's got a lot going on, so remember this one. And uh, so let's go to the Lord in word of prayer and ask the Lord's uh, intervention upon these. And um, uh, Father, we again want to come to you and just uh, thank you and praise you for all that you do. And uh, Lord, we're thankful for the birth of these little ones and thankful for the health that you've given. And uh, Lord, at the same time, we want to pray for these who, whose health is not so well. And uh, Lord, we pray that you minister to them like only you can. And we pray that you would, um, that may they experience your presence like they never have before during the times of trials like this. And uh, may they experience your grace like they haven't before. And uh, may, may you prove yourself real in their lives as they look to you. And I uh, thank you again for loving us, being good to us. And I pray you have your way and will in each and every life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. <clears throat> Miss Shay and Miss Hannah has our special today.
but I have delivered a message, I, I think it was about six or seven years ago, on this woman, and it was, uh, it was uh, Jochebed, and now her name is actually not mentioned here in chapter two, but we're going to look at that in just a moment. And uh, now, uh, and I know this is Mother's Day, and I want to honor our mothers, and at the same time, I want to challenge our mothers. And, uh, and I tell you, a lot of the things that I have learned over the years, I have learned through my mother. And I, I know many of you can say the same thing. And, uh, but let me just speak to the mothers in particular here this morning. And uh, this is not, this principles that I'm going to give is not just necessarily from mothers, but this is, it applies in this particular situation here. You know, but the Bible tells us when God created uh, all of creation, all the animals, all the birds, everything like that, that he... Uh, created them, male and female, to reproduce after their own kind. And do you realize that that's what we do? We reproduce after our own kind. And uh, that is not just physically speaking, that is also spiritually speaking. If you have a spiritually dead home, how do you think your children are going to be? All right, and so uh, so let me just say, we repro reproduce after our own kind. And then another principle that comes along into this is that we uh, we reap what we sow. If we sow uh, uh, a corn kernel, we're not going to reap beans. We're going to reap corn. And uh, that's just the principle that, that God gives us. And so spiritually speaking, if we're sowing into our children spiritual little nuggets and spiritual life and spiritual examples, then in most cases we're going to we're going to reap the very same thing. We're going to see some things here in the life of Jochebed this morning. And, um, and in Jochebed, she raised some godly children to be leaders, to lead the entire nation of Israel. And so uh, we'll look at this. Look at chapter number 2, verse number 1. And there went a man out of the house of Levi and took a wife, a daughter of Levi. And the woman conceived and bare a son. And when she saw him, that she was a goodly child, she hid him three months. And when she could no longer hide him, she took for him an ark of bulrushes and daubed it with slime and with pitch and put the child therein. And she laid it in the flags of the river brink. And the sister stood afar off to wit that what would be done to him. And the daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash herself at the river. And her maidens walked along by the riverside. And when she saw the ark among the flags, she sent her maid to fetch it. And when she had opened it, she saw the child, and behold, the babe wept. And she had compassion on him and said, This is one of the Hebrew children. Then said his sister to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go call to thee a nurse of the Hebrew women that she may nurse the child for thee? And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go. And the maid went and called the child's mother. And Pharaoh's daughter said unto her, Take this child away and nurse it for me, and I will give to thee thy wages. And the woman took the wages and nursed it. Took, excuse me, took the child and nursed it. And the child grew, and she brought him unto Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. And she called his name Moses, and she said, Because I drew him out of the water. Now, if there is a picture... Or, or if you, in your mind, would think about one of the most influential people in all of the Bible. If you go to the New Testament, you might consider the Apostle Paul being that influential person uh, for the cause of Christ. But when you go and look at the Old Testament, uh, there are several characters, but there's one that probably comes close to the very top, if not the top, and his name is Moses. And uh, he ended up leading the children out of Israel, I mean, excuse me, out of Egypt into the, uh, over to through the wilderness, and God used him mightily. But I want us to go, and we've read this story, and it does not give the names here. The only name it gives is Moses. And so I want to go over to look at Numbers. In Numbers chapter 26, Verse number 59. Oh, I can't get my pages. Okay. 26, verse number 59. And the name of Amram, now this is uh, the husband of Jochebed. Amram's wife was Jochebed. 
the daughter of Levi, whom her, whom her mother bare to Levi in Egypt, and she bare unto Amram, Aaron, and Moses, and Miriam, their sister. Now, interestingly, if you study this family, Miriam was the oldest, all right, the oldest child. And then you have Aaron, who was the next child. And then you have Moses, who was the youngest of the three. All right, and so uh, the first thing I want us to consider now is the hour that Jochebed lived, the hour that she lived. And it, again, interestingly, let's go back to chapter number one. But we think today the day that we live is evil, don't we? I mean, all the things that our kids have to deal with that we didn't have to deal with, and we think about the wickedness that is in the world today. And I would even <laughs> go as far to tell you that there are some political leaders even at the day, of the day that we live are trying to take advantage of the situation that we're in to try to stifle Christianity. And, uh, and you know, when you, can, when you can leave abortion clinics open and you can leave the liquor stores open, but the churches need to close their doors, there's a problem with that. All right, and, and now look, and I'm not saying I'm not saying I'm not making a statement. I'm just I'm just doing an observation here. All right, but the time that we live, you know, there has always been an attack against God and against His people, always throughout human history. Go and go and read the accounts of history, and uh, you know who the gladiator times, many of which Christians were thrown to the lions, and, and Christians were part of that uh, to kill them. And, uh, and so the time that, that we live, we think that we live in a wicked world, but let's go and look at the time when Jochebed lived. Let's go to Exodus chapter number 1. And you have to remember also that, remember the story of Joseph. We've preached on Joseph here in recent days. But Joseph, through a series of events, became second in command of Egypt. I hope you remember the story. He was abandoned by his family, sold into slavery, put into prison, and, and, and God raised him up in a, in a special time to do a special work, to actually to save lives, to actually is what, is what he was raised up for. Not just to save the lives of Israel and Jacob and all of his brethren, but to save lives throughout the whole world. And God raised him up for that purpose. And so uh, he was very well respected in Egypt. This is where they were, very, very, very well respected. But there came a time when generations have now gone. Joseph has now passed away. The old Pharaoh has now passed away, and a new Pharaoh has come on the scene. And the Bible tells us that there was a time when he did not know Joseph or did not know what Joseph had done in the past. And God is signifying something for us here that times have changed. The time that changed... Uh, when Joseph, Joseph, when he was in power and in, in the palace and with Pharaoh, I mean, everything was great. Everything was wonderful. God was blessing. And now the times have changed. And let's go to, and this is the time that Jochebed lived. Uh, it's after all of this. And let's go to Exodus chapter 1, verse number 1. Now, these are the names of the children of Israel which came into Egypt. Every man in his household came with Jacob. Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Zebulun, and Benjamin. Dan and Naphtali, Gad and Asher, and all the souls that came out of the loins of Jacob were 70 souls, for Joseph was in Egypt already. And Joseph died, and all his brethren, and all that generation. And the children of Israel were fruitful, and increased abundantly, and multiplied, and waxed exceeding mighty, and the land was filled with them. Now there arose up a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. And he said unto his people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Come on, let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply. And it come to pass that when there falleth out any war, they join also unto our enemies and fight against us. And so get them up out of the land. Therefore they did set them over taskmasters. Now remember, everything was great. Everything was wonderful at one point in Egypt. But then all of a sudden there was a new leader that came on the scene. A new Pharaoh, and what did he do? He decided he was going to have to do something about this prosperous nation that was living within their borders, the Egyptian borders. And so the first thing they did was they appointed over them taskmasters. That means they were they were basically ushered into slavery, into bondage. This is where they were. And they built for Pharaoh treasure cities, Python and Ramses. And the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. So the, the harder the work became 
And the harder life, life became, God seemed to bless them more and more. And they multiplied and grew. And they were grieved because of the children of Israel. This is the Egyptians. They were grieved because of the children of Israel. They've done everything they can do to try to slow their growth down and to slow their blessings down. But God was still blessing them. And look at verse 13. And Egyptians made the children of Israel to serve with rigor. Now, rigor, that means with strictness or constraining them, or overabundantly making them work. And so they didn't just have taskmasters. Now again, Jochebed, Amram, Aaron, Miriam, they were living during this time. And so they have taskmasters. And then they're having to work with rigor. They're having to serve the Egyptians, not just serving, but serving them hardly, with hard labor and hard work, day, day in and day out. All day. And look what it says here. Where did I stop there? Okay, verse number 14. And they made their lives bitter. This is what the leaders were doing. They made their lives bitter with hard bondage in mortar and in brick and in all manner of service in the field and their service and all their service. Wherein they made them serve was with rigor. He mentions it twice. This is hard work. This is bondage this is slavery and the king of egypt spake to the hebrew midwives of the name of the one was shifra and the name of the other was Pua. and he said when you do the office of a midwife to the hebrew women and see them upon the stools if it be a son they shall kill him but if it be a daughter then you shall live then she shall live but the midwives feared god and did not as the king of Egypt commanded them, but saved the men children alive. And the king of Egypt called for the midwives and said unto them, Why have you done this thing and have saved the men children alive? And the midwives said unto Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women are not as the Egyptian women, for they are lively <laughs> and are delivered ere the midwives come in unto them. Therefore God dealt well with the midwives, and the people multiplied and waxed very mighty. And it came to pass, because the midwives feared God, that he made them houses. And Pharaoh charged all his people, saying, Every son that is born you shall cast into the river, and every daughter you shall save alive. So, here we go. We have not only in the time that Jochebed lived in Amram and Miriam, and in the time that Moses was born. Now, uh, Aaron was already born, so he didn't, it, didn't, it didn't come into his life that he had to be killed. But now... Now, I want you to think about being this young mother, Jochebed, and already having to be in slavery and in bondage, and then she discovers that she is with child, and she knows the decree that Pharaoh has already issued, and that if she was going to have a boy, it was going to be killed, or if she was going to have a girl, it would be okay. Now, they didn't have ultrasound or, or whatever, you know, to tell what they were going to have. They, she had to go full term to have the baby, and then they would determine at that point what was going to happen to that baby because of the sex of that baby. And so this is the hour that she lived. She lived in bondage, under fear, under threat. I mean, this is similar in the time that you live. I mean, in the, if we could bring a modern time into this, this would be some, something similar to, to Nazi Germany. If you were a Jew, we were going to round you up. You know, that's, that's the way it was. They were going to round them up, and they uh, exterminated many of them in, in, in uh, gas chambers and, 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 and other ways and other means. And this is something similar to this. This is the time that Jochebed lived. It was an extraordinary time. Let me go back to Exodus here. Exodus chapter 2. So she gives birth. She tries to hide this. She tries to hide it from the leaders. So I can imagine she's probably trying to hide her pregnancy, trying to hide the birth of her child, trying to hide it. But look what it says. It makes a, a note here in verse number two. And the woman conceived and bare a son, and when she saw him, that he was a goodly child. A goodly child. Now, in Acts chapter seven, it goes a little further than that. It went in, um, and I believe it was uh, Stephen that was preaching. And uh, he, he goes and he's telling about this instance and he makes a mention of Moses, the baby Moses, and he says exceeding fair. So this tells us something about Moses. There's something extraordinary about Moses. He was a good looking baby. Now look, I would never tell anyone that they had an ugly baby. Ever. 
and, and I hope you would never say the same thing. I'm a pastor. And I go into a lot of hospitals, and I see lots of new little babies being born, and they are, every one of them, now listen to me, and I mean this at the bottom of my heart, every one of them is so very precious. Every one of them. But let me just say, I have seen babies that are not as quite of attractive when they're born as others. All right? And I, I know you have done the same thing. But in this particular case, God makes a distinction here that there was something special about Moses. And I think that comes into play here in just a little bit. There is something special about Moses that he was he was a goodly or and he was exceeding fair. There was something unusually different about him, uh, about his appearance as a baby. And so she's been hiding him, and it gets to the point, verse number 3, she could no longer hide him. You know, there comes a point where a baby's going to cry, and a baby wants to play or, or you know, or, or something like that, and she just can't hide him anymore. And uh, remember the time that she's living in, and I can imagine the whole time when she's been pregnant with child, that she's praying to the Lord about what she is to do or how she's going to handle this. Or, or And I'm sure she has a great concern about this, but I'm going to tell you when... We enter times of great concern like that. You know, th th it comes a time when, when it requires great faith. Uh, you know, that when, when she lives in times like this, or when you think we live in evil times or bad times, that's when faith and prayer and trusting the Lord has to, has to be on the increase. And this is exactly what Jochebed did. So we see the hour that Jochebed lived. Now let's look at the heart uh, that Jochebed had. And... Uh, and Again, these were extraordinary times that she was living in. And let me just say that, that the hard times of life like this, like Jochebed was going through, is the times that the Christian, just like you and I, when we go through hard times, and we go through times where we're having to trust, and we're having to lean on the Lord, and we're having to trust, ask God and pray to God and have faith in the Lord, that's when our faith and our, that's when our Christian life grows even stronger. Those are times when we go through milestones in our Christian life. It's when we're going through the hard times. And this is what uh, Jochebed was going through. Uh, she was going through a difficult challenge. She had decisions to make. And so she begins to make a, an ark of bulrushes. And where did she get an idea like this? You know, I mean, where, where did she get an idea to go make an ark of bulrushes? I think the Lord put this into her heart. I, I think, you know... Sometimes God puts things in our heart and we can't explain why. We can't explain what, what in the world God wants for this. I don't know. But nevertheless, uh, uh, Jochebed ends up making an ark of bulrushes. And I can imagine she's taking special care, just like a, a mama bird building a nest. Taking special care uh, to build it just exactly the way she wanted it to be. But I think she was led of God to do this. And God had put it in her heart to build a little boat. You remember how Noah... When God told him to build a boat, to build an ark, what did the world think of him? Oh, they laughed and they mocked. But God delivered them through that ark. Now look, and then through the heart of this woman, God led her to build a little ark of bulrushes, a little boat. And she made it, and then she got to the point where she put slime and pitch in it. Now look, you just think the world that she lived in was a dangerous, horrific world. But I want you to think she's going down to the river now, the river in Egypt. This river was worshipped as a god, all right? And she's about to put her baby in an ark of bulrushes into the river where there were crocodiles and snakes and everything else. Now what do you think... <laughs> Uh, the danger that she lived in with the political system going on around her, killing the babies, slaves, bondage, hard work, work with rigor. But then she goes down to the riverside to put her baby in the ark where there were crocodiles and snakes and, 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 and other like. What kind of faith and what kind of trust and what kind of uh, obedience to the Lord do you think that required of her? I think there was much courage in her life. Now, she came to the place where she had to trust God and let go of that little baby. Think of that. And let go of that little baby. Now, look, there will come another time. I think this was probably the hardest decision in her life that she ever had to make. But look, look again in chapter number 2, in verse number 10. She has to give him up again. And the child grew, and she brought him unto Pharaoh's daughter. Now, look, 
You remember? And whose child is this? It's really uh, it's, it's really Jacobez, but whose child has, has uh, who has placed a claim on this child now? This is Pharaoh's daughter. And so now after, we're going to talk more about this, after she has weaned him and after he has grown a little bit and after he has grown, and now she, she goes and, and she's having to give this child up again. Look. And the child grew, and she brought him unto Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. And she called his name Moses. And she said, because I drew him out of the water. And so I think the second time of giving up Moses was probably not as bad as the first time. She had already seen what God could do. We're going to look at that in just a moment. But now we see him, her giving him up the second time. What a tough decision. The greatest decision and the greatest test of Jacobet's life. Was she going to trust the Lord and obey the Lord and place her faith in the Lord? Or was she going to try to do it herself in some other way? And I can, I can be assured that her as a mother, she wanted something for Moses that she could not give to Moses. Think of it. She wanted something for Moses' life that at the point that she was in, in the hour that she was living, that she could not give to him. And so she had to trust the Lord for this. Now, I'm going to bring something into this. Now, how many mothers out there have children? And there's things that you want for your children. Well, if you're a mother, you have children. All right? <laughs> so... Uh, a mother out there that, ha that has children, and you want something for your child. It could be physically, it could be spiritual. Let's talk about spiritual for a moment. Now look, we can do all that we can do, but there comes a point in time where we have to trust the Lord with their life. We have to say, Lord, I'm going to trust you, I'm going to obey you, I'm going to believe your word, I'm going to follow you, and I'm going to pray to you, and I'm going to trust you that you're going to do with their life what I cannot do. And this is what she did. And so she trusted God and she let go and she put her little boy in that ark of bulrushes. And so we've seen the hour that Jochebed lived. We've seen the heart of Jochebed, how she loved the Lord and trusted the Lord above everything else. And now we're going to see the hand of God in Jochebed's life. All right, so let's look at verse number five of Exodus chapter 2. And the daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash herself at the river, and her maidens walked along by the riverside. And when she saw the mark uh, ark among the flags, or the bulrushes, or the, or the, the, the plantage, the plants, the aquatic vegetation there, she sent her maid to fetch it. Now isn't it interesting that the timing of all of this? I think Jochebed obeyed the Lord exactly when she was supposed to obey the Lord. And because of it, God had other, other things arranged already for this, this situation. And when she had opened it, she saw the child, and behold, the babe wept. Can you imagine finding an ark of bulrushes in the, what in the world is this thing? And then she goes and opens it, and the minute she opens it, what does Moses begin doing? I mean, the minute... Did, did God send a little angel to poke him or something like that? I don't know. Pinch him? I don't know, but he started crying at that moment. Now, most ladies would have compassion toward a little baby. And I, and I think God used that and, and orchestrated that. And this Pharaoh's daughter, her heart broke. The matter of fact, it says that she had compassion on it. She had compassion on him and said, This is one of the Hebrew children. Then said his sister, now this is Miriam. Then said his sister Miriam to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and call to thee a nurse of the Hebrew women that she may nurse the child for thee? And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go. And the maid went and called the child's mother. And Pharaoh's daughter said unto her, Take the child away and nurse it for me, and I will give thee thy wages. Now look, when you give something to God, and you do it God's way, and you obey God the way that he intends for you to do it, look, he makes it so much better. Not only did she receive her child back, but now she's getting paid to raise her own child. How many would like to be paid to raise your own child? And uh, I, 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 I kid with my daughters a little bit about that. Uh, but, and I thought most of you do too. But, uh, 
But but jo, uh, Jochebed got paid to raise her own daughter. No, excuse me, to raise her own son, Moses. And uh, Pharaoh's daughter paid her to do it. And can you see the hand of God in that? <clears throat> and look, let's read on down. And, and Pharaoh's daughter said unto her, Take the child and nurse it. For who? Nurse it for me. Take this child away and nurse it for me, and I will give thee thy wages. And the woman took the child and nursed it. What a marvelous thing. This is a miracle. Do you understand that? This is a miracle that God brought in the life of Jochebed. And the child grew. And this is very interesting. And the child grew, and she brought him unto Pharaoh's daughter. Now look, there's a whole lot of time in between, and the woman took the child and nursed it. And then, and then the Bible says in verse 10, and the child grew. There's a lot of time that's in there. And we're not told how much time that is. But I can imagine, you know, little babies, they understand more than you realize they understand. And I remember, now, me as a little, as a, as a young father, I remember me as a young father taking my daughters and I would sing to them when they were going to sleep and I would tell them stories and I would do different things like that. And I'm sure this is exactly what Jochebed did. Jochebed, it says that she... she was nursing him. And it says, and the child grew. So I can imagine as this child is growing, there are some things that Jochebed told, told Moses. And I think one of the stories that she told Moses was how that she trusted the Lord and how she obeyed the Lord and her faith was in the Lord and that, he pla that she had placed him in the ark of bulrushes and how it all turned out and how God worked it all out and, and because of her faith and trust in the Lord. What a wonderful story. I think that probably, she probably even told the story of Noah. About how God delivered delivered Noah's family through, through an ark. Maybe the stories of Abraham. I, I, I'm not sure exactly what all. But I'm sure there were stories like that about the mighty hand of God. That he had with Israel. And that he had in the life of this young mother, Jochebed. And as the child grew, this is the type of stories he heard about faith and about trust and about courage in spite of the fear and anxiety and worry that she was fear facing. And I think Moses learned a lot of this from his mother. So what was, what was this mother doing to Moses? She was planting the seeds of faith in the life and the heart of Moses. And what do you think those little seeds... Remember, uh, as far as, as, far as uh, reaping and sowing... We plant, we reap exactly what we sow. We reap more than we sow. Don't we? And, uh, and so she had reaped faith, uh, she, excuse me, she had sown faith and obedience and trust in the Lord. And then and she was placing that into the heart of Moses. And what, what, what does Moses become later on in his life? He becomes the man that God would use to deliver Israel. Now think of this. He had to go and stand in front of Pharaoh. How much faith do you think that took? He had to go stand in front of Pharaoh. He had to believe God. He had to trust God. Now look, there was some uh, balking on his, on, and I'm sure there was in the life of Jochebed at times. But Moses, he had to go stand in front of Pharaoh. What do you think he heard about the stories and, and what, what created? Now, now we're seeing the seed that was planted and now that seed is beginning to blossom. Do you see it? And then we see the whole nation of Israel coming out of Egypt and here it can't be done. Why in the world did you lead us out here? And what does he say? We need to look to God. We need to trust God. And the Red Sea was parted and they walked across on dry land. Other times they would see water come from a rock. They would see battles waged and won victoriously. Saw a man that would go to Mount Sinai as the mountain was melting. Think of that. Because of the presence of God. Where did that courage and that faith and that trust in the Lord, where did it come from? It came from the seeds of his mother that was being planted while he was a little child. And so, 
Look, we reproduce after our own kind. I told you that. And I think Jochebed, she was full of faith, full of trust in the Lord. And she planted those seeds in the heart of her child. You know, Aaron, at the same time, he was right with Moses on a lot of that. Miriam, she would, as they crossed the Red Sea, it, she would sing the song of Moses. Remember that? Stories? All of her children. Now, I'm not saying they were perfect. I'm not saying they didn't have their faults. But I'm going to tell you, they trusted the Lord and they believed the Lord and they followed the Lord. And I think it all came because Jacob had planted those seeds in the heart of her children. And so, now look, let me, let me say this. Some of you may not be mothers out there, but I want to say to our ladies, you may be an 18-year-old girl that just graduated high school. Do you know that we have other, other little ones that are looking up to you, watching what you do, the words you say? the attitude that you have, the way that you walk in your life. And that goes for all ages. And I want to say to you that we it is our duty and our responsibility to plant those seeds of faith and trust in the Lord, obeying the Lord, believing the Lord with all of our heart. We want to fuss about the generation that we have about not loving the Lord and not trusting the Lord, but I think the finger is not pointed at this generation. The finger is pointed at the generation before because what kind of seeds have we planted? And I want to ask our mothers today, what kind of seeds have you planted in the lives of your children? Now, I want to encourage you as well. I know this is maybe a little bit harsh. I want to convict you a little bit because we need this. But I also want to say that, you know, my mother planted a lot of things in my life. And my father died when I was seven years old. And she had to take on more of a role and responsibility than God really intends for a woman to have to do. And during those times, she planted seeds in me. And I say to you that I would not be here today doing what I'm doing except my mother had planted those seeds in my life. Now, I don't come from a line of preachers. I don't come from that. But this is what I do come from. I come from a life where my mother planted seeds of faith in God and trust in Him. And I tell you today that my faith and trust in Him and the Lord today is as strong as it ever has been. And I want to say to you that it's mainly because of my mother and the seeds that she planted. And I want to ask you today, what are the seeds that you've planted in your children? Uh, some of us have work to do, don't we? And, uh, and so I just want to encourage you. And, uh, and just uh, renew our, those of you who are planting those seeds, may God enable you, divinely give you the help and the strength and the wherewithal to keep planting those seeds. And, uh, and those that have not, I want to say to you, it's time to start. It's time to start. And uh, I tell you, I am thankful for my mother, and I'm thankful for all mothers this morning. I think each and every one of us can look to our mothers and find something positive that she's influenced our life with. And, uh, and I, I tell you today, you need to call mama. You need to let her know how much you love her and appreciate her because of all the things and all the time that she's devoted to you over the years. And I want to tell all our mothers this morning, Happy Mother's Day. All right? May God bless you. Let's sing. We're going to sing the song, Come Thy Fount of Every Blessing.